FOTM Exposed, the truth about Doug Perry, FOTM1, and Chris Evans, Rancher, for Christ. Doug claims a cult expert okayed FOTM teachings as we see here. The following is what that cult expert has to say about Doug Perry, FOTM1, Chris Evans, Rancher for Christ, and the Fellowship of the Martyrs slash Church of Liberty. The parts that Doug Perry and Chris Evans do not want you to know. I am making this video because I must sound a very clear alarm to those who think that Jehovah, Yahweh, the God of the Bible is telling them to join the FOTM movement and to anyone who has supported that idea by my letter saying that FOTM is not a mind control cult. I have asked Steve Wilson, aka Hetgo, to post this for me since I don't have the technical expertise to do so. I feel this issue is clearly important enough for me to address in order to write any wrong conclusions drawn from my supposed not a cult letter. In researching FOTM and holding it up to the light of scripture, I would suggest very strongly that any voice telling people to join with the group is not that of Yahweh, Yahshua HaMashiach, or the Paraclete, the third person of the Godhead. In other words, it's not the God, Jesus Christ, or Holy Spirit of the Bible. I am being very clear in the names by which I am calling God, since in my over 35 plus years of experience in deliverance ministry, including working with people from witchcraft and ritual abuse, I know that there are many entities who masquerade in the name of all three persons of the Godhead in order to, to deceive even the very elect, if that were possible. I believe this occurs in FOTM. When I wrote the letter, I said that based on our experiences in cult release ministry at that time, I did not see the marks of a mind control cult in FOTM. I also said there were clear problems with FOTM's teachings and theology and that I would deal with them at another time. Having said that, after in-depth inspection of their fruit and teaching, we see much that is anti-biblical in the FOTM teachings and find that neither Doug's nor Chris's life measures up to scriptural admonition for biblical leadership. We cannot sanction what they teach nor how they minister. My husband and I have looked at this together and came to the same conclusions, but since I started this thing, I will finish it. Part of our 35 plus year ministry is getting kids out of mind control cults involved examining the doctrine of the groups they were in in order to discern whether or not they were false teachings. So I'm not coming at this as some neophyte who wants to give FOTM a bad time now. Since writing the cult expert letter in August 08, apart from having sent the following letter, which I will read in a few moments, to Doug on November 22, 2008, I have been silent. While I had 10 pages written addressing many issues that concerned me, along with the scriptures they contravened, the Lord specifically told me to pull back and not get embroiled in this issue at that time. Thus, I was blessed and astonished to see that every single issue I had addressed in the 10-page essay was dealt with scripturally in Steve, a.k.a. Hego's False Teaching Explained videos. I agree with them 100%. I waited initially for two weeks for Doug to respond to my November 22, 2008 letter. He states in his videos many times that if people will contact him with issues or questions, he will respond, but he did not. As of this posting, neither Doug Perry, Chris Evans, or anyone from FOTM has responded to the cult expert's letter. While Doug and Chris are quite happy to use me to validate his own credibility publicly, he has not respected me enough to even answer my letter sent to him privately. I want to make it clear here that I am the cult expert whose letter Doug has used to justify himself when that was not the intent of the letter at all. Yes, I said he could use the letter, but it was written simply to say that I did not find mind control cultic activity in FOTM at that time. It was not a blanket approval of FOTM teachings and practices. I do not appreciate Doug or Chris using my letter out of context and as a weapon against other people. people. I am responding now in this public venue because of how my letter was misused in public.
So the cult expert finds the teachings and practices of Doug Perry, FOTM1, Chris Evans, Rancher for Christ, and FOTM1 unbiblical. Let's look at the letter now. FOTM exposed letter from the cult expert to Doug Perry, YouTuber, FOTM1. This is a copy of the original letter of the cult expert with 35 plus years experience to Doug Perry, FOTM1. Doug referred to this cult expert in his video, FOTM is not a cult certified by an expert. Claiming the voice he listens to, obeys, and receives teachings from is entirely biblical. However, when compared to the in-context teachings of God's Word, we see this is not the case. This mail or letter was sent to Doug Perry, FOTM1, and courtesy copied to Steve Hedgo, dated 22 November 2008. Hi Doug, after I sent the You Are Not a Cult letter, I spent hours and hours with God and with the Word and with your stuff, including looking at court documents, etc. And frankly, I feel that you are far enough from what Jesus and the Apostles and the prophets of both Old Testament and New Testament taught to be almost a heresy if you're not already there yet. But after writing about 10 pages, the Lord said to lay it down, take care of myself, rather than embroil myself in your issues, so I did. For the first time since then, today, I was on YouTube and saw your recent additions, as well as the two videos Steve put out about False Teaching Explained. False Teaching Explained, Parts 1 and 2. As I watched them, I saw that he literally addressed every issue I had been grappling with, with Scripture, and I believe very fairly, honestly, and biblically. And then I watched your video, God Would Never, and what I saw was that you created a straw man and then proceeded to tear it down without ever actually addressing the issues that Steve has exposed in his teaching. You are speaking to one who has done hugely unorthodox things because God told me to, and I resent that you have created issues that some narrow-minded people would agree with to try and slam those who are not narrow-minded and who have never held anything of the nature you described against you. The issue is sin, and you constantly jump all over the board to avoid facing and dealing with it. Brian, her husband, also a cult expert, listened to it as well, and his comment, he who was the cult buster, was, wow, there's some really weird stuff in that. So in conclusion, what I believe the Lord, Yeshua, has told me is that I am to leave it alone, but to encourage you to watch those videos prayerfully and humbly. Repent of your sins and get right with God. For whatever reason, after your experience when Andrew and his group prayed for you, you went off into your own thing where you were certain that your voices were the Holy Spirit and that you refused correction or counsel from anyone. Neither my husband nor I find in your teaching anything to justify your position that you hear uniquely for the body and that anyone who doesn't agree with your teaching is creating disunity. In our experience over the past 35 plus years, we have found that those who declare themselves to be God's anointed prophets, teachers, or mouthpiece for the church for these last days invariably are self-appointed and end up creating cults. As false teachers and prophets, they delight in causing dissension to the detriment of many young and innocent believers. Scripture offers them a millstone around their neck. What I really think is that somehow you were baptized in another spirit, or else your own personal pride and sin opened you up almost immediately to familiar spirits that know Scripture well but who lead you to actions that evidence bad fruit in character and actions as well as bad teaching. I haven't seen any evidence of your humbling yourself and giving up your thoughts and ideas and voices for the sake of unity with your brothers. You do humble yourself, but in your way according to your voices, but you never humble yourself and give in on anything to your brothers and sisters in the body. You always insist that they bow to what you have heard. And then you are very arrogant and even nasty when people who have good character and recognized anointing try to share with you what they see in your stuff that they question or disagree with. 
You anointed people to ordination, saying your voice has told you to. Did they make a mistake, or did you mishear when you ordained Steve? Anyway, that's my take, and I'm going to copy this to Steve so he can see that I am deferring this to him, and what he has said stands for me as well. My husband's admonition is, brother, repent. Sincerely, M.